As a photographer, there's nothing worse than hearing the sound of a thunder shower the night before a shoot. That belief that you're gonna get washed out, the occasional wander to the window to watch the downpour and hope it all stops before your photography journey begins. And it's easy to just turn off your alarm and sleep in. But it's the mornings after a storm where the light really has mood, the atmosphere is dramatic, and there's just a perfect character for your photography adventure. And it was early this morning, and out of nowhere last night, just got hammered by thunder showers. So neither Greg or I don't think slept very much just because it was so, so loud. And hopefully we don't get rained on right now because we're gonna go out and hopefully get some photos early this morning. A little bit of moody light. Can we go up the hill? Okay, cool. So I'm not sure if you can see me even though I put a little bit of cell phone light on my face but we climbed up to the top up here because this morning I thought that there was going to be like the best chance for good light down this valley this way and then it's just totally totally cloudy. The good news is the clouds look like they're breaking a bit and the clouds are really moody. The even better news is from up at this vantage point and shoot in like six different directions. Where this old tower, you've got the town that we're staying in back that way. And then if we come around the tower to this side, get the really old town here and another one way down the valley. So this is perfect. Let's talk about mood super quick. I think we all kind of get caught up in this idea that we need to be shooting epic light, really beautiful sunrises and sunsets all the time, and that when it's overcast and cloudy like this, it doesn't work. But I think the reality is you need to shoot the mood. You need to shoot how it feels and how it felt. And last night was dramatic with all the rain and it felt dramatic, it felt moody. And waking up this morning in the dark, it felt dark, it felt moody. And so I shot that shot. That's the image I shot this morning. Now I'm moving on to shot number three and I kind of want to walk you through the process because this image is going to be a, a really long exposure. These clouds up here don't look like they're moving, but they are absolutely chucking. And I want to capture that. I want to make like striations in the sky. And so right now the camera's shooting a 30 second exposure at ISO 800 because that's what the meter told me was correct. And it looks a little bit on the bright side, but it does look correct. So I'm gonna guess that I'm an F9. F11 will do the trick, ISO 800. In fact, it's getting brighter, so I'm gonna guess. Let's drop the ISO down and stop to ISO 400. And I'm actually gonna test shot this just in case. But then essentially from ISO 430 seconds, I can split the ISO while doubling the shutter to get my desired shutter speed. So I go to ISO 400 to 200, that's one minute. From ISO 200 to 100, and that's two minutes. So my exposure should be two minutes if this looks like it is the proper exposure. And it's on the dark side, so I'm gonna switch over to bulb mode, and I'm going to go three minutes to compensate for that extra half stop of light. F11, ISO 100, and now we wait. Okay, three minutes is up. And it looks good, it looks really, really moody. That's the desired outcome. I really wanted the clouds to have that movement showing. It's almost like a wave of blue in the sky. I think it looks really, really good. 
I do think that I want to try to maybe do a vertical frame of the exact same thing, but really happy with how this is coming out. It was an awesome morning that was really really nice and actually the skies have kind of cleared up and it looks like it's gonna be a really nice day today was a classic example of why you get out and shoot every day Greg sent me a message at 4:52 this morning saying are you seeing this weather are we still shooting sunrise my response was are you an idiot Greg of course we're shooting sunrise this is what we do you don't drive all the way into the middle of this facing death defying roads and not shoot sunrise. Even if there's thunder showers, you get out and shoot. Even if it looks bleak, you get out and shoot. Just get out and shoot. And in my experience, only on the rarest occasions do you get out and shoot and regret it. In fact, I'd say one out of a thousand shoots have I ever regretted getting out of bed. So get out and shoot. And we're gonna get out of Ushkuli. This was an awesome, awesome place. This place is incredible. I have fully decided that I will be running an adventure trip here in Georgia for camping, hiking, and photography in 2020. Yeah, we've turned this into a location scouting trip and it's been unreal. So we'll be back here probably in two years, hopefully with some of you guys. And for now, get some breakfast, get the girls, and get back on that scary ass road. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned the dogs in Georgia. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. These caucus dogs, they're like a special breed. I'm actually not sure this is one of them, but they're just gorgeous. And they're so friendly and cuddly and soft. Oh, I want to take one home. You're the best. Bear dog. We made it back to Mestia, we survived the road again. And to be honest, I think the road was less dangerous feeling today. It also helped that uh, there wasn't a lot of traffic on it. And the drive was actually nice, really beautiful. We're gonna stop here and grab some coffee, relax, chill out a bit, maybe get some lunch, and then push on to wherever we end up sleeping tonight. <laughs> We 
refueled now and uh, we're on our way. The next bit of road's beautiful, but it's not death-defying, so we should be there in a couple hours. I actually think that we're heading to Poti, to Poti today, which is the Black Sea, a sea I've never seen before. So even though Poti or, Poti's like a port town, we're going to some little beach near it. Even though it's not supposed to be like brilliant or incredible or famous or anything like that, I'm looking forward to it. A new sea today. Four hour drive to get there. So we spotted this place on the drive into Mesita yesterday and we had to stop here. Cafe, bar, but the best part is the view here looks crazy. If you're into contrasts, do what we just did. We were at Ushkuli, 2100 meters, about 20 degrees Celsius. One of the most remote settlements in all of Europe. And then we came here to the coast. I don't know where we are. We're south of Poti and it's hot, 33 degrees. And the coolest part is we're in this big suite with a massive balcony, like a massive, massive balcony. And it is party time on the beach at sunset. Yeah, music, yeah, people out, it's busy. This is such a, such a contrast and I kind of love it. The winds have kind of picked up, but it's just been really nice to just hang out here with the crew, drink some of this Georgian vodka that we picked up at the grocery store for a dollar, just to test. And to be honest, it definitely doesn't, no, it, it goes down smooth. It's actually really, really good. And we've just been hanging out here, having a drink, shooting some time lapse, people watching at the beach, and it's been the perfect way to end this like road trip. We didn't plan on coming to the beach, and this kind of just almost like closed the circuit for us of Georgia. Gave us like a little bit of everything. We got the city life, we got the mountains, we got the really rural areas, and then we ended at the beach. And uh, yeah, cool way to visit the Black Sea for my first ever time. And yeah, the sun's just dipping down behind the horizon. And amazing, just a phenomenal day, phenomenal trip. And I'll see you guys tomorrow as we head back to Spalisi.